my company is looking into setting up a multi-jurisdictional operation, but may have to restructure its European presence in doing so. What should we look out for? In the current economic climate, one trend we're seeing is companies selling part of their business as a way to restructure on a global scale and focus on their core business lines. However, these carve-out sales which involve only part of the workforce can be complicated from an employment perspective, especially in Europe and other countries which have laws that mandate who must transfer. Today, I'll share with you a few top tips if you're involved in transferring employees as part of a multi-jurisdictional deal. First, confirm your in-scope jurisdictions and identify which are your priorities. This may be on the basis of which have the largest headcount, the business lead-in time to the proposed transfer date, or the complexity of the employee information and consultation procedures. But understanding which jurisdictions have key business focus or complex legal issues is essential to delivering a timely employee transfer. Second, understand the method by which employees will transfer to the buyer. Whereas in America and many parts of Asia, employees will need to be offered new employment by the buyer. In most European countries and in some South American countries, employees will automatically transfer with the business when it is sold and have rights associated with this automatic transfer, like the right to be employed on the same terms and conditions and not be dismissed because of the transfer of employment. Third, set perimeters on how to determine which employees are assigned to the business being sold. In some instances, it will be clear which employees are working for the business and should transfer but employees who work in divisions like finance or HR might work for many business lines and it may not be immediately clear if they should transfer with the business. In Europe, there are principles to determine who should transfer and employers are unable legally to cherry pick employees to transfer. Fourth, get to grips with what consultations need to take place, when they must start, how long they take and who must be consulted. In Europe, it's common to have bodies such as unions and works councils who need to be informed or consulted about a business sale and having good communication plans is critical to a successful employee transfer. In some cases, they must start before the deals are signed and there may be criminal penalties for non-compliance. And finally, don't forget about practical issues of transferring employees as part of a sale such as ensuring payroll is ready, employee benefits are set up and any immigration approvals are obtained. Here, working with an employer of record or entering to some form of transitional services agreement can be a practical solution. I hope you found this helpful and we'd love to help you with your next corporate transaction or restructure.